everybody and welcome to another top five board gaming video. In this particular one I'm going to be talking about replayability. That said, before I get started, if you haven't done so already, please take a look at all my social media pages as well as my Patreon. This is where I'm going to post new videos as I finish them. I also post fun articles, I do giveaways, and on my Patreon page if you sponsor me then you can see videos ahead of time even. Lots and lots of cool stuff. That said, getting into replayability. This is something that I tout on my channel pretty much whenever I get a chance to. It's one of the reasons why I buy a specific board game or buy specific board games is because it's something I think that I can play again and again and again. It's something that I want on the table that I want to see again and that that really just gives me longevity for um, a lot of these purchases. So what you're going to see from my particular list are a lot of games where there's a bunch of mix and matching going on. So you've got different starting conditions, you've got um, a lot of different things that change all throughout the game, a lot of different strategies, stuff along those lines. That said, I would love to hear what you guys have to say about this. What are the games that you find to be highly replayable, that you love going back to, that you never really seem to get bored of? Please let me know in the comments below. You guys know I love hearing from you. But that said, we're going to get started with my number five. And number five, I have Small World. In Small World, the idea is that you're going to have a race of beings of some sort, and they're going to have an ability. And you're going to try to spread them around the map as much as possible, and then you're just going to be like, oh, no, I'm done with you, and then you're going to get a new one. Essentially, the cool crux of the replayability on this game is the fact that every time you play, those combinations are constantly changing and constantly shifting. So you always have to change up your strategy of what you're going to do, where you're going to go, and how you're going to get there. That said, it is lower on the list because strategically there's a little bit less to offer than some of the other ones, but it's still a tremendous amount of fun. Small World, my number five. And number four, I've got Kingsburg. Kingsburg is a wonderful worker placement game where you're rolling dice that determine what your workers are able to do and all this kind of stuff. And worker placement games in general tend to be really replayable because you have a lot of different avenues to victory. There's always going to be different things that you need, different strategies that you have to adopt, all of those kinds of things. That's part of why Kingsburg is on this list because it does that in a really great way and I'm generally not a big fan of worker placement games. That said, also, if you add in To Forge a Realm, the expansion for Kingsburg, it takes it up to 11 because it's a wonderful modular expansion that adds new buildings, new uh, starting powers, all sorts of other different things. So you've got a big mix of a bunch of different mechanics coming together that change how you play every single time. Kingsburg, my number four. And number three, I've got Lords of Waterdeep. That's right, it's another worker placement right after I said I don't really like them. That said, Lords of Waterdeep specifically is D&D based. I love D&D, so I recognize the characters, I recognize the places, and after I've played it a few times, I really do love this game. Now, I do not have the expansion for it, although I've heard and I have played with it that it really does add a great deal to it. However, just the base game itself is really not bad. Again, it's a worker placement, so you've got a lot of different strategies uh, that you can go with in terms of how you're going to uh, use your workers, what buildings you're going to try to get, all that kind of stuff. That said, it is more complex compared to Kingsburg, which is why it's a bit higher up on the list. Not to mention having the D&D &D theme makes me personally like it a little bit more. So, Lords of Waterdeep, my number three. And number two, I've got Evolution. This is a game that's relatively similar to Small World in the sense that you're going to have your different species, your different organisms that are going to be able to do different things and you're going to add to and take away and all that kind of stuff throughout. However, with the expansions, especially where you got flight and climate in this case, this is a beast of a game. It's huge. You can play a huge number of players. It's so much fun and the science behind it is actually surprisingly good. One thing I, I just love the way that you add on the traits and you can change it on the fly essentially. Again, strategically you're looking from not only game to game but essentially round to round. So you've got a lot going on with this and it's tremendously fun. Not to mention the fact that it can even teach you a little bit at least about the science behind it. But it's a wonderful game. Just the base game itself is great and I highly recommend trying it out. Evolution, my number two. 
And number one, I've got Cosmic Encounter. That's right, did you guys really think I'd talk about replayability without talking about my favorite game of all time? Of course you didn't, you knew it was gonna be here. So Cosmic Encounter, similar to some of the other games in terms of your starting ability is different every time you play, or at least most times you play. And the other big thing with this game is a lot of the game is based off of negotiation. It's based off of talking to your opponents and making and breaking alliances. So in that sense, no games are ever really ideal. Identical. It's going to change what cards you have available, how you're going to be able to play them, all of that kind of stuff. It's all going to be altered from game to game. And again, talking about expansions, Cosmic Encounter, this edition, this is the Fantasy Flight one, has, I believe, six now, if I'm not mistaken. I don't have all of them regardless. But there's a lot of new alien powers, a ton of new mechanics, all sorts of great stuff. But honestly, you don't need the expansions. You really do not in order to enjoy the game. Just the base game by itself is wonderful and really easily and well replayable with even the same group over and over. Cosmic Encounter, my number one. Well, everybody, that's going to be it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video on my top five favorite replayable games, or the most replayable games, in my personal opinion. Again, for me, a lot of it is about your starting condition and how that affects long-term strategy, as well as, like, for the worker placement, what you're able to do round to round, and not sort of getting caught in a cycle type of thing. So uh, these are the ones that I personally enjoy. But again, as always, I would love to hear what you guys have to say and what you guys enjoy. What are your favorite replayable games? Why do you find them to be so replayable. What do you really enjoy about them? Please put any and all thoughts in the comments below. And with that, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.